Hello everyone, this is Night Sky and welcome to my new Let's Play for Virtual Villagers 5 New Believers. It is the final game of the original Virtual Villagers art style, unless you count the Origins reboot in 2012. It's going to structure a bit differently than my other series. I'm going to show you how to get started in this episode, and each one after will feature one puzzle along with some progression stuff. This game has the most content by far and there's so much to do in this game but I'm going to start explaining the mechanics on how to get started in this episode. So let's hit play. Please name your tribe. I'm going to name it the Sky Tribe like my others. Okay. There was once a mysterious island called Isola, home to a tribe of lost refugees. One day a child made a discovery, something lost and again found, on a forbidden path at the edge of the village. Maybe it was dropped from that uh, mysterious mask villager from the ending of Virtual Villages 4. The elders gathered to examine the mask. They had never seen one like it before. They must determine if others are nearby. So they appoint a small group of villagers to search the forbidden path. Oh man. Appointing a group to search a forbidden path. Select five villagers. Yep, it's gonna be like the last game. We get to choose five villagers to set off on an expedition. This game has a lot of working tasks to do at the start so my group will have one 12 year old child, two women and two males or actually I, the child can be any age but I, I think I'm gonna have a mess then. And we're also gonna look for villagers with building and farming skill. Well, something I should mention while I'm on the screen um, virtual villagers games likes and dislikes only a few of them have an actual effect if they like running they'll always run even as an adult until they become elderly and if they dislike running they'll walk at an elderly pace even as a child and if they dislike learning they'll struggle to pick up new skills and the other two are only virtual villagers three relevant all right, we have a good squad. Let's start our journey. The path took them into the darkest parts of the jungle. Although they could see no one, they sensed they were being watched. An ambush. Your villagers have been captured and are now the prisoners of this faceless tribe. Oh no, we have these scary looking masked villagers, they kidnapped us. We are going to press yes for the tutorial because it does explain who these masked villagers are and also tells you some useful stuff, so I'm gonna press yes. Since you have elected to use in the tutorial, the tribal council has stepped in and adjusted the makeup of the expedition for a better chance of success. Really? Uh, don't tell me you took my runner. I think I had a good squad. No! Did they? I don't know. Welcome to Virtual Villagers, New Believers. Oh no, your villagers have been captured by a faceless tribe of non-believers. They need to establish themselves here in the center of Isla and try to help these heathens regain some hope and faith. Yup, this game takes place in the center of Isla in a forest. Let's explore, touch, and hold your finger anywhere on the ground and drag to move around the village. Good, that's how you move around. Feel free to explore. Let's get to know one of your villagers 
find and touch a villager one without a mask to select them. Okay, um, are you the runner? Haluku. The white circle shows which villagers selected and see important details like their name, their skill, one, one that they have check marked, and their action. And the little stone, uh, empty stone box at the bottom shows you an additional action. Here we can press detail. This is the detail screen. Learn more about each villager such as faith, health, and skill. Check the box to the right of a skill to set a skill preference. Touch down to return to the main screen. Yeah, by default is order by age, but you can also order them by skill. Who has the most skill? Oh, Waikiki. And you can also toggle health. And like I said earlier, only a few likes and dislikes have an effect on the villager's behavior. It's going to be running, learning, and work. The health status at the top depletes if your villager has zero food, is sick, or has a negative island event happen to them. If it's depleted for too long, they might die before old age. And skill here on the, in the center is gained by doing some tasks and is required for some puzzles. To increase this, you need to drag working villagers to do tasks that's related to it. If you want them to focus on a skill, as long as they have some skill in that category, you can check mark it. And they'll focus on tasks related to it. So Waikiki has some building skill. We can have her focus on if we have it check marked. Let's move a villager. Touch and hold your finger to on a villager and drag to move them. Hey. Like so. Moving villagers influences their behavior. Drag and drop villagers anywhere you would like to help them explore useful or interesting places. Your villagers interact with many locations around the map. Let's start by dragging one of them on the green bamboo fence that imprisons them. Alrighty, everyone. Make a granary out of the fence. This should be torn down. Your villagers are using the green bamboo to build a bin to store much needed food. Keep your villagers working on it. Hey. Huh? Hmm? Huh? Alright everyone, dismantle the fence and if you want them to focus on it, we have them all check mark on building and hopefully they'll gain some skill so they can keep focus on it. Great, your villagers skill you set a villager skill preference. From now on, they'll prefer this type of work and gain skill the more they practice. You'll notice there are villagers wearing various colored masks. Find and touch a villager wearing a blue one. No. Okay, we can talk about the masked villagers. This guy. You selected a heathen villager, that is their name. Heathen villagers don't believe in you, so you cannot check their details or interfere with them. Heathens wearing blue are not aggressive. And their circle will be red instead of white. Find a touch, a villager wearing an orange mask. There's a ton over here, this one right here. Let's select this guy. Taku, untrained, bumbling around. You selected a heathen guard. Heathen wearing orange masks are aggressive. If they are approached by believers, they will chase them away. Yeah, these two are guarding the firewood. Let's demonstrate that with our child. Um, we can also, yeah, look for villagers in the bottom right with these arrows next to the detail button. Oh no, running to safety, chasing the intruder. And yeah, that's what they'll do. They're some they're pretty annoying. <laughs> you cannot touch heathens because they do not believe in you. For now. Find and touch a villager wearing a red mask. There is one over here by the Nani bush. Nani remaining 991. 
Oh, we have an island event. Little Apawa becomes curious about the mass people and stakes out a secret spot from which to observe them more closely. After a million hours, she gets caught by a heathen. Oh man. So these are events that can happen to your villagers. They can either have a negative, neutral, or beneficial effect. And I do not know which one I want to select. Let's select... Talk to the heathen. The heathen, as it turns out, is not hostile, but is understandably concerned about being spied on. After a fairly lengthy conversation, they reach an understanding, and the heathen brings the child back to her parents. Their grateful parents offer food items and thanks. Furthermore, little Apawa feels that she has learned something about the wants and needs of the strange mass people. Perhaps this will be handy later. Oh, an apprentice devotee. That gave her apprentice skills. Oh, yeah. Let's select the heathen guard. The red one. The senior heathen guard. Heathens wearing red masks are scary. They won't chase believers away, but they are so scary that your villagers will run away. Yeah. Like so. Running away from the scary heathen. Oh, she gained quite a chunk of devotion skill from that. Try dropping one of your villagers onto a heathen villager wearing a blue mask. Alright, what about our apprentice devotee? That skill is related to what we're about to do. Can children do this? No, they don't. <laughs> they can't. Nice try, but children don't work. They love to play and won't do what you ask until they grow up. They can still help out though, as they sometimes find delicious mushrooms or collectibles. Yep. Children are children from age 2 to 13, and at age 14, they are working age. Alright, let's grab one of you. How about Roko? Talk to one of the blue heathens. Oh, on your first try, this heathen gained faith. Roko, explaining the truth to the blue heathen. Hey. Alright, let's do another one. How about the kid? Oh. Good, your villagers persuaded the heathen villager to believe in you. When the heathen villager faith mirror crosses the middle, he or she will convert and join your tribe of believers. Yep, and this little glowy orb above their head, uh, it represents a cooldown when you hey. can like explain the truth to them again hey. this savage is tired of listening tired of listening they'll run away like that you can only try to convert each heathen once then you must wait a while before you can try again oh i just explained it oops the glowy light above means they are tired of listening for now Villagers who believe in you increase your divine energy. This unlocks god powers. Let's try a power now and spawn some butterflies. Tap the butterfly icon. Then drag it somewhere. And we can tap around to summon some light of butterflies. Wow, butterflies are great for distracting children, both believers and heathens alike. Notice how you use a little bit of your energy. The more believers you have, the faster your energy will replenish. Oh, on this one, there's... In every single game, there's an infamous uh, rascal orange kid mess. They'll, since they're a kid, they're fast, and they'll run around all across the village. So, very fittingly, they're labeled rascal. Because that prevents your adult villages from working if... They wander too near. Let's teach wander villagers to research. We can't do this right now. Dra drag an adult villager to the large table. At the center of the lab. Hey. No, we... Yeah, we can't. Oh no, your villager is being chased away by the heathens. The heathens occupy many areas of the village and have erected totems as a symbol of their ownership. 
In order to start research and gain tech points, you will need to gain control of each area by dismantling the totem. Right here is the knowing totem. It should be torn down. But nope, this one has a guard. Let's check the technology screen. Touch the tech button on the left side. Here we are in the tech menu. Welcome to the technology screen. Use the tech points gained from research. Well, we need to have access to the lab to get tech points first. But once we do, we can use the tech we gain from research to upgrade a variety of different technologies. The right side of the screen shows all the powers you have unlocked. As well as those you have not yet unlocked. They can be unlocked by increasing your divine energy. Touch done to return to the menu screen. Here is science for 8,000 tech points. Advancements in science enable your villagers to accumulate tech points faster. Medicine for 5,000. It will reduce the frequency of disease and increase longevity and fertility rates. It's somewhat important to get level 2 once your villagers start getting old so they don't die um, as soon. And learning, how much is this one? Try and select it, 4,000. It causes your villagers to pick up new tasks faster. At level 3 we can build a nursery school where children can be educated, just like in Virtual Villages 4. In fact, every single one of these is returning from Virtual Villages 4 except for Spirituality. Spirituality replaces um, Virtual Villages 4 like tree themed dendrology. This is not to be confused with spirituality from the fourth from the first game. Anyways, as I was getting to construction, advancements construction enabled you villagers to build and repair various structures. It's, I believe it's mostly for the hut, but it's also for a puzzle. And food mastery. Increases your villagers' understanding about preparing and storing food. Level 2 will get a 50% bonus, and level 3 all food gathering is doubled. Level 2 costs 3000. And the final one, spirituality, is pretty important. Training your villagers in spirituality increases your max divine energy, allowing statue upgrades and influences heathens to believe. And the next one costs 8000. So, naturally, the most important. Um, tech to yeah to upgrade its spirituality but it is the most expensive well tied with science children can also contribute to village life their keen eyes can spot mushrooms and small collectibles that adults might overlook drag a child to this collectible before it disappears Ari right, Opawa apprentice devotee collecting a relic Boom. Ooh, a child found a relic. Your villagers can collect Isola's small and beautiful treasures, but only when they're found by a child. Repeat relics are converted into divine energy. Well, repeat lab gear gets converted into tech points. I forgot to make um, notes on how much energy you get for repeated relics, but I will do a chart. I won't do the the tech or the research gear for now. I'll throw a chart once we get to that because no. we don't have access to the lab yet. Let's check out the collection screen. Oh yeah, speaking of collectibles, welcome to the collection screen. Here you can see which collectibles your village children have gathered. Each relic that you collect permanently increases your max divine energy. Each piece of lag gear permanently increases tech point production. Oh, is that new? Is that a new mechanic? I did not remember. I don't know. I didn't do the tutorial in the fourth game. It's a bit revamped. Instead of having four collectibles, we have two being scientific and relics and the story related one is the necklace but because there's only two categories we get a ton of different ones to compensate like 
8 rare, 8 uncommon, and 8 commons for each category. But like I said, we can't collect any scientific collectibles as the lab is guarded. But we'll get to that in a few episodes. You can see the statue of the game's puzzles in the puzzles and milestone screen. Tap the puzzles button on the left side of the screen. Okay. Welcome to the puzzles and milestones. The island is full of puzzles and hidden secrets waiting to be discovered. Your goal is to solve each of those puzzles while helping your tribe survive and make more new believers. Yep. And you'll get little cave uh, cave stone drawings of each one and then once we complete them we'll get a little um, not exactly a screenshot just just a picture well as we approach the conclusion of the tutorial we arrive at the inevitable topic of making babies deploy builders on the love shack to provide a romantic place to get together take your time when we manage to get it finished, the final steps of the tutorial will resume. So yeah, we can't do this for now. As these two healing orange mask healing guards are guarding the firewood. But once the love shack is done, I will explain the breeding mechanics. I did go over it a little bit. The fence is 56% completed. Something I forgot to mention about the godly powers. To increase the max and unlock new powers, we need to, well, like I said, build a statue, collect new relics, increase our population, and convert heathens. Let's do that for now. It's always a good idea to convert as many uh, blue mask heathens as you can before they group up next to the guards. Oh, not the purple mask one. That's going to be the first puzzle for the next episode. Here are the map screen. Welcome to the overview map. Enjoy a bird's eye view of the village. You can touch anywhere on the map to zoom into that spot. Unfortunately, you can't see any collectibles up here, but it's nice to just like look around. That's whole entire map. You can even see some of the edge leak out. It's not interesting in this game because it's just a forest. Let's see what they're doing in the pool. Oh, this is Atoro, our heathen chief. All heathens, um, they do not age until they are converted. And if you want to get firewood to build the love shack, you can, like, manually distract the orange mask heathens by dropping the villagers till they chase them. And slowly drag them away or even just hovering our villager, like so. But that's annoying. I will show you how to properly get firewood without having to do that. The orange and red ones can't be converted until like near the end of the game when you have the last god power. Just so you know. Now the last thing I should talk about before ending the episode. Here are the trophies. This is more like your achievements. It just gives you something to do uh, once you've done all the puzzles. Not required at all. It's something nice to do. And what else? In the menu screen. Here in the options you can change the audio settings and what music trap you listen to and also the game speed. On fast speed, 1 hour is 1 easel a year. On normal speed, 2 hours is 1 easel a year. And on slow, 3 and a half hours is 1 easel a year. I'm gonna have it on fast for now. You can also change your tribe if you want other save files even start over and delete your save files and this is a little help screen you can pause it if you want to read it it's another additional tutorial
And you can also view the credits created by Arthur Humphrey. Anyway, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. I've explained all the basic mechanics you need to know about this game. See you all next time in the next episode when we're going to be doing the very first puzzle. So I'll see you all then.